Well, Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. On this Christmas Eve, I want to start with a note of thanks. Of thank you for all of the gifts, the cookies, the cards, and um, especially the two fruitcakes that I've gotten from people here at Calvary already this year. I feel always at welcome and at home, and I thank you so much. Um, it's such a blessing to be here, and though my family is staying in Chicago, I do have a place to go, so thank you for all the invitations. My host actually asked her mom if it was okay to expand their family Christmas to include me, and her response was, Jesus is to be shared. So I thought that was really sweet. How true that is. Looking at the stories of Jesus' birth, it was very apparent to Mary that she would have to share her baby with, well, everyone. But before she even starts to come to this realization, she has to wrap her head around the idea of having a child at all. Our story starts today with the angel Gabriel coming to a very young lady, likely around 15 years old, about the same age as some of you out there, and her name is Mary. It seems that every time an angel of the Lord comes to anyone, that person ends up terrified. I can't imagine how an angel looks or sounds, let alone the angel Gabriel probably nothing like we expect. With the obligatory, do not be afraid, the angel Gabriel launches into a laundry list of gifts that God will give Mary. Like an excited little kid, Gabriel says, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Ta-da! <laughs> Mary, still in shock at the sight of an angel speaking to her, and her thought is, how can this be? For I am a virgin. Before the question is fully out of Mary's mouth, Gabriel jumps in, explaining, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. How could Mary argue with this logic, with an angel of the Lord standing in front of her? I imagine her dropping to her knees, letting it all sink in, and saying, here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. From then on in the story, we don't hear much of Mary's voice. We only sense that she is deep in thought about what it all means and what her role is to be in this story that is so much bigger than just her. While Je Joseph and Mary are traveling to Bethlehem, Mary's water breaks, and they frantically look for a place for her to give birth. Desperate, they have to settle for a stable and a feeding trough to lay the newborn Christ child in. Can you imagine Mary's thoughts at that moment? She's probably thinking, this is not what I planned. How often we feel like Mary in our day-to-day -day lives, but especially at Christmas. We build up our hopes and our expectations for a perfect Christmas, trying to manage everything, only to find that we just can't do it all. We rush around trying to find the right presence for our family only to get stuck in traffic and frustrated. Or we push our bodies to the limit to make Christmas dinner for all our guests and make ourselves sick in the process. Or we simply chase a notion of Christmas nostalgia from our childhood that just doesn't feel the same this year. We yearn for more than good feelings and commercial happiness 
but get down on ourselves when we realize we've bought into the anxious chaos of Christmas. We want so much to give to one another, to share joyful time with our kids, our family and friends, and we're willing to sacrifice our health and our sanity to get it. We feel our inadequacies staring us in the face. And sometimes we want to run away and say, wake me up when Christmas is over. I'm over it. It's too much this year. Hands. <laughs> if we're honest with ourselves, it's possible we substitute these seasonal anxieties for our deeper seated fears. Will grandma or grandpa make it this year? How do we get through this Christmas without him or her? We never expected a diagnosis like that, and so close to Christmas. In the midst of all our anxieties and deep longing for more, God comes to us. God comes to us in the most vulnerable way imaginable in the form of a baby. Our great and powerful God who created the heavens and the earth, who brought order to chaos, and who loves and cares for us even when we reject God and are not satisfied with paradise. That same God chooses to become one of us, to be birthed like us into our world racked with violence and suffering into our world that will continue to reject and ultimately kill our God. God chooses to take on flesh and blood in the baby Jesus that becomes that vulnerable so that we can reach out and touch God and feel God's love when we are most vulnerable. In times when we feel inadequate and we're scared of life's expectations, like Mary, God comes to us and says, you have found favor with God. I choose you to share Jesus with the world, for nothing is impossible with God. In lonely nights, when we feel we are the lowest of the low and the world has forgotten us, like the shepherds, God comes and announces Jesus was born for you to bring salvation and peace to your life. You will never be forgotten in Christ. When we feel far away from God, afraid to come to church because we feel like outsiders, like the wise men, God gives us a sign in Christ Jesus. The good news of Jesus is for you. You who feel unloved, unlovable, unworthy, you are loved and you are accepted for who you are, a child of God. God's unconditional love for us is revealed in the vulnerable baby Jesus in the weakness of Christ on the cross. In Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we know that God is not only with us, but that God is for us. In Jesus, God chooses to walk with us as one of us in our time of deepest need, to lift us up when we're bent beneath life's crushing load, and to stand up to the destructive powers of this world that tear us down, to die our deaths and raise us to new life in Christ through the outpouring of his own body and blood, and by his resurrection, we are given grace and peace beyond anything that we can imagine. And we're given a taste of this healing mercy each time we fall to our knees as Mary and accept Christ's gift of bread and wine, body and blood, saying, here am I a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So come as you are in your strength and in your weakness. For Jesus is to be shared. And to you, 
this day is born a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Amen.